Go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will, please, to the 103rd Psalm. Glory to God. Psalm 103. I want to say something. You know, we're always, you know, we, we teach the Bible. We teach. Uh, um, you, you can leave those open, Jerry. Leave those, just shut the doors to the preschool. Leave those doors open today. Um, we always teach the ideal. Amen. We teach what God expects. You know, God had commandments throughout, throughout the Old Testament. God had commandments in the New Testament. Um, my, my sermon will not work this morning, so here. <laughs> I, I can't use that. I got a lot of bass. Dick, where are you? Somebody, we, I got a lot of bass. I'm hearing it about, come out here pretty bad. Need to tone it down a little bit. Don't know where that came from? That's all right. Hallelujah. Even with all the commandments of God, see, we have, we have God's moral law, God's commanded law. God, what God expects, what God demands, but then we also have God's mercy. Now, God's mercy is not, uh, you know, reason to do things that his moral law says we shouldn't do, but his mercy is there when people violate that. So we thank God for his mercy. Amen. God's a merciful God. God is a forgiving God. God is a God of restoration. Can you say amen? amen. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. I mean, and forget not his benefits. Who forgiveth. Everybody say forgiveth. forgiveth. All thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Now, 95% of the time when we preach along this line, we jump on the healeth all thy diseases. But this morning, we're going to talk about the, he's the God who forgives all your iniquities. God is a God of forgiveness. God is the God of restoration. God is the God who can take a mess and make it something different. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God can turn your circumstances around. God can take the, the ugliest of circumstances and make them good. Amen. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, aren't you glad? Yeah. I'm glad to know God is a, is a God who can take what I mess up and fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, man. I'm, I'm glad to know that. How many, how many have never messed up? Well, I'm talking to the right crowd, ain't I? Hallelujah. Yeah, everybody's messed up. Hallelujah. You know, and, and, and just because we messed up doesn't mean God kicks us out. Remember the woman <clears throat> who was caught in adultery in the very act? Now, I, I always loved that story because they left the guy out. I mean, if you're caught in adultery in the very act, he had to be a guy somewhere. Uh, actually, right there. And they brought the woman, put it for Jesus, and, uh, you know, we caught this woman in adultery in the very act, and wouldn't know what he would do. He just wrote, just wrote, sit, wrote in the ground, wrote in the ground, never said a word. Now, the, the speculation is he was writing out, you know, different sins, and they were all looking at him. He, he, I think he finally said, he's without sin, let him cast the first stone, and he started writing, you know, charlatan, backstabber, backbiter, adulterer, you know, it's, and, and they all just started dropping the stones and walking out. Hallelujah. I'm sorry, I got this. There's something on my glasses that's aggravating. It's right in my view, too. It's like this little speck. Ah, praise God. I'm glad I got glasses so I can read, but I hate having to wear them. Hallelujah. Contacts. Oh, yeah. I saw my dad try that. It doesn't work. Hallelujah. Not for, not for, not for a tailor. <laughs> I'm not going through that. But you know what? He, he, he wrote, started writing on the ground. They all walked out one by one. Finally looked up at the woman and said, Woman, where are thy accusers? She says, I have none, Lord. He said, Neither do I condemn thee. Now let's go and sin more, no more that you have. That you, you know, the worst thing not come upon you. But here's the deal. He forgave her in the midst of her act. See, God is a God of forgiveness. Amen. Amen. See, what she did was wrong. But he was forgiving. Amen. Amen. And we all, we all encounter this in life. You know, uh, I think one of the worst things that's ever happened to the church is the new teaching that we don't repent for our sin. You know, over in, look over in 1 John 1, 9. The, the bottom line is that there is restoration in the repentance. God is a God who will restore us. He says here in 1 John, um, 
If we say we have no sin, we, de we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. Oh, thank God for his mercies. I said it is, it is part of his faithfulness to us in the midst of sin that if we repent and confess it, he forgives us. Oh, glory to God. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. <clears throat> um, chapter 2, look at verse 1. He says, my little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, now what's he saying here? He said, God doesn't want us to, but if you do, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We have someone who will go on our behalf and argue that even though in the midst of our sin, he shed his blood for us, and he is the perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world world. What does this teach us? This teaches us that if we'll come to God in the midst of, of, of our sin. Now, I'm not preaching about sin. I'm, he said here, I write these things. You know, we preach things that you sin not. But if you do sin, it's not the end of the world. Hallelujah. You have an advocate with the Father who's, who's there with his blood, who's, who's lo who loves you, who cares for you, who has a plan of restoration for you to bring you back into the Father's heart and, and, and to, to cleanse you of the unrighteousness so that you don't, live the, you're, you don't have to live your whole life condemned and defeated. You can be brought back in by the blood and the precious caring of the Father. Glory to God. Can you say glory to God? Glory to God. And he said, look, so again, these things I write unto you that you sin not, and if any man sin, you may, may want to say it this way. But if you do, Jesus is your, is your advocate. Now, I can't think of a better advocate than Jesus. Amen. Well, Pastor, you preach we shouldn't do so. Well, that's what we write these things that you sin not. But if you do, there's an advocate waiting to argue for you. He said, I shed my blood for him. He said, that, you know, whatever they've done, you know, back at the first line, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive of, of us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, he cares so much for us that even though he, his moral law says don't, he made provision if you do. Amen. Amen. That's how much he loves us. That he, you know, he says, don't do this, but if you do, I've got a provision for you that will bring you back and, bring, and, and not, you, you won't be ruined because of, the, of, of doing. I've got a plan that if you do, I can restore you and make, make, and make it all good. It's the plan of forgiveness. It's the plan of restoration. God is a restorer. Amen. I said God is a restorer. God loves you even when, you, when, when we've made the biggest of, of mistakes in the world. And we've all done it. Hello, I remember right after I got saved. Now, now the back story to Janie's little story this morning was, you know, uh, I had picked her up from work in my little Fiat Sports Spider 124 Sports Spider convertible. And um, I said, you going to church? Because I got saved the week before. So, and I waited four days to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then I, are you going to go to church with me? Yeah, I'll go to church with you. I picked her up at work, and her work her, her was only two blocks from her house. So I'm driving. She said, take me home. Okay, drive up, she gets out, she tells me how unmasculine he is for a guy to be a Christian, all this kind of stuff, slams the door and goes in the house. All right, praise God, I'm saved, I'm serving Jesus, I'm going to church, you know, you know, go ahead on in the house, girl, <laughs> hallelujah. And so I go to church, and you know, if you grew up Pentecostal, you know Wednesday night, when you close the service, everybody comes up front and prays. That's how you do it in Pentecostal church, hallelujah. And so... You know, I'm sitting about four, four or five rows back. Brother Gentry's up there preaching. Or he was more of a teacher, so he's teaching. He finished his teaching, and he went, and he said, um, he said, okay, everybody come, out, let's come on down front and pray. And about the time I stepped out, here comes Janie. <laughs> well, he says, you, you didn't see the whole thing. He said, he told me later, he said, uh, about the time I was giving, saying, everybody come front, the back door's up, and she walked in, and she just never stopped. She just kept right on coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's even hope when, you, when, they, when they slam the door and tell you you're unmasculine. <laughs> Y'all can't imagine my wife doing that, can you? No. Can I, I, I'll, I'll tell a dating story one day. Not today. It's not you just, you just have to come back and figure out what it was. All right. <clears throat> so we have here, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, who forgiveth 
all thine iniquities. He heals all your diseases, but he forgives all your iniquities. First John comes over here and says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, I just, I just love the goodness of God. You know, we'll preach God's law, we'll preach God's moral law, we'll preach what the Word of God says. You know, but just, like we said here, John says, I, I say these things so you don't sin, but when you do, Jesus is your advocate. Jesus is your restorer. Jesus is your answer. Jesus is what you have need of, and he will forgive you and cleanse you. Hallelujah. He'll argue your case before the Father. He'll restore you to the Father. Glory to God. Look over here with me, if you will, over into... Um, Oh my, I want to say 1 Corinthians chapter 4, but um, I think it might be Hebrews. <laughs> Help me out here. I just went totally blank. Um, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Hebrews 4? Nah. Yes, Hebrews 4.16. There you go. And it was 4 something. That's what I thought. We'll back up a little bit. Verse 14. Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, or our confession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, of our weaknesses, of our pains, but was in all points tempted like we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, what does that mean? Well, obviously, if everything's great, it's not a time of need. If everything's on the right kill, it's not a time of need. If you got everything hunk of door between you and the Lord, you're just living right, doing right, everything's right. It's not a time of need. When does that, when does this take place? When you, when you botched it, when you messed up, when you're in the midst of, of a struggle, when you're in the midst of, a, of an absolute attack, when you, when you sinned. He said, come to the throne of grace so you can find mercy. Now, this is not the advoca uh, 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 advocating sin, because we've already read you these things, we write unto you that you sin not. This is. Man, what happens when you do? Does God stop loving you? Nope. Does God cast you aside as profane? Nope. Does God kick you out the front door and say, don't ever come back here again? Nope. nope. What does God do? He says, come to my throne. Yeah, come boldly to my throne. Why? Because when you get to the throne, there's an advocate with the Father, Jesus, who's arguing your case for you. Not based on merit, but based on his blood. And he says, when you get there, what you're going to find is mercy. You're going to obtain mercy and find grace. Hallelujah. Oh, we're, we're grateful to God for his mercy. We're grateful to God for his mercy and his grace. Amen. Amen. See, this is, this is, the, this is the right side of grace. This is where God says he will, he'll empower you not to do things, but, but if you do. Not that it was okay. Not that it was right, not that it didn't matter, but if you do, I'm still a merciful God. And I have my, the blood of Jesus is powerful enough to redeem you and to cleanse you and to restore you, glory to God. Amen. That's the right side. That's the way grace is. Right. Amen. Not that it condones, but it restores. Amen. Not that it approves, but it loves. And it brings a restoration in the hour of calamity. Glory to God. It brings a restoration where there is no other answer in life. The love of God, the grace of God. So what does this say again? Come boldly to the throne of grace. When in the, let's, let's just kind of skip down to the very end. For help in the time of need. Like we said, that can't be when everything's right. That can't be because you've been paying your tithe. Can't be because you've been praying enough. Can't be because you've been, you know, uh, spending time with the Lord. Can't be because you separated yourself, you know, enough. Can't be any of those things. It has to be in the midst of when, when everything is wrong. When you've done wrong, you've sinned, you've, you've erred, the other things are going wrong. He said, this is the time of need. But he didn't say run and hide. He said, come boldly to his throne of grace. 
And when you get there, you're going to find mercy. Oh, thank God for his mercies. Not judgment. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, judgment comes in the case of unrepented sin. Mercy comes to the repentant. I said, mercy comes to the repentant. When you recognize this was wrong, I did wrong, I, said, I, I failed, I messed up, I did the worst I could have possibly done, and God, I'm sorry, mercy comes to the repentant. Not judgment, mercy. Amen. Oh, thank God. Oh, how we've all needed this mercy. Amen. How we've all had to, occasion, had to, had to look and search and seek out and find the mercy of God. You'll obtain mercy and find grace. Oh, praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. Let us therefore come. Remember, verse 15 says, Jesus was tempted at every point. Now, he didn't sin, but he was tempted. And he says, we, he, he's touched with your infirmities. That's why he's your advocate. That's why he argues your case. Again, this is the repentant. Remember when we talked about 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the guy that was in the church with his stepmama living like he was living. He wasn't repentant. He was just open to it thinking, it's all right. He wasn't repentant. Judgment came. But I am here to tell you today, to the repentant, mercy comes. Oh, thank God. That's why he says you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because the only thing you're going to get at the throne of grace is mercy and grace. That's why you're going to come to it. You don't run from it. You don't hide from it. You don't get obstinate and harden your neck against it. You come to the throne of grace, and what you're going to find is you'll never find judgment at the throne of grace. You'll find mercy and grace because God loves you. Well, how could he love somebody who sinned? <laughs> While we were all together dead in our trespasses and sins, Christ died for the ungodly. Duh! I mean, that's pretty much the crux of the gospel. When we were dead and I, see, now when, just because you get saved doesn't mean he changes his behavior. Jesus still died for sin. Y'all hear you gone home. God, God wants to restore. That's, what, that's, what, that's why I, I, I'm so upset with people teaching against 1 John 1, 9. Because, see, that repentance, confessing your sin, is part of coming to the throne of grace. And what you will find, you'll always find mercy and grace there. But if you harden your heart, what you'll find, you will find judgment. When you harden your heart and say, well, I didn't do anything wrong. That's hardening your heart. And you will find judgment. And he's already told you, come on to the throne of grace. Because over here is mercy and grace. There's forgiveness. There's restoration. There's love. There's safety. Glory to God. And so we honor God for his work. We thank God that when we come, and that's why First John tells us that we have, a, we have an advocate with the Father. Advocate is a legal term. And, and in modern day terms, we would basically say we have a lawyer. And Jesus has never lost a case before the throne. Every case he's ever had, he won. Because what does he do? When they come up and you come to the throne of grace, he says, my blood, forgiven, boom. Real simple. I mean, he, don't, he didn't even have to get out of his seat. My blood. Father says, okay. But who comes to the throne of grace? The repentant. Amen. Remember the Bible says this. It says, godly sorrow worketh repentance. There's two types of sorrow in the world. There's, there's worldly sorrow was I got caught. There's godly sorrow that I did wrong. I sinned against God. And what does God start to do? It brings repentance. What happens in repentance? We come to the throne of grace. What happens at the throne of grace? We obtain mercy and we find grace. Glory to God. That's why we confess our sin. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every head bow. I told you this was different. It's a short it's tying into the service. Father, I pray for those here today. I know that you're speaking to hearts. I know that different people go through different things, face different things. 
But Lord, you, laid, you changed my sermon this morning to this. And heavy notes, wasn't prepared to minister along these lines at all. But you changed it and you orchestrated it this way. If you want to come up after service, look, the, the hand, the type printed out notes that I have are on prosperity. And nothing to do with, with what I'm talking about this morning. The notes on my iPad were on the covenant of prosperity. But the Lord's ministering to people today. People or person. So as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I want to ask you some questions. The first one I'm going to ask you is, are you born again? Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you ever come to a point in your life where you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord? Not have you been to church, not have you joined Sunday school, not have you had First Communion, not have you been water baptized. Have you ever in your heart accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord? If this morning you have not done that, then the first most major step of your life is to come into the kingdom of God, the family of God, through the personal intimate knowledge of Jesus Christ. Believing that he's the son of God and God's raised him from the dead. You confess him as Lord. If that's you this morning, would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Anybody here, you have not come to know Jesus Christ personally in your life. Second invitation I want to get, give, is are you backslidden? Backslidden basically means you've gone back from serving God, you've walked, in, you've walked into sin. Now, again, the, the penitent received mercy and grace. If you're here this morning, you know that, you're ready to get that straight in your life right now. Would you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. Anyone here today? Glory to God. Now, as I wait, I'll let you think about that a minute. I don't believe God moved this message in a different direction so that we could all just sit here. Here's a good time to get things straight with the Lord. God's told you he's merciful. He's gracious. He's full of grace. He wants to restore you. He wants to restore marriages. He wants us to restore people. He wants to restore relationships. He's the God of restoration. Anybody here need to, need to come and let us minister to you this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I, th I just thank you. I know you're dealing with people. I know you're dealing with their hearts. Let not the shame they think they would feel, hinder them from the restoration they can gain in walking with you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.